Hey guys, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to Flipkart. In this video, I am going to discuss about the Shadow DOM and how it is implemented in web page. In testing, most of the time, we know that we have to deal with the Shadow DOM. So it is very important to know about the Shadow DOM and how it is implemented. We will talk about the testing part maybe in another video. And of course, there is no direct way to handle it in Selenium. But if you see modern tools like the Playwright, of course, we have a way. So we will talk about that in a separate video, like how to handle that in the automation. Today, I'm going to focus on what is Shadow DOM and how it is implemented. So let's get started now. So the first obvious question is, what is Shadow DOM? An important aspect of web components is encapsulation. Being able to keep the markup structure, style, and behavior hidden and separate from other code on the page. It provides a way to attach the hidden separate DOM to the element. What is this in real? I will tell you while doing the code. For example, let's say that we have a paragraph element where the text is in red color. But we want some part of the DOM where I don't want to focus or I want to inherit the styles or whatever the JavaScript file I have from my parent document. Okay, So I want to create a separate DOM within the DOM and we can achieve that with the help of Shadow DOM. Before getting into the implementation, we have to learn few of the terminologies. And here we have four terminologies. One is the host, root, boundary and the tree. Shadow host. The regular DOM node that Shadow DOM is attached to. Okay, And then we have the shadow tree. The DOM tree inside the shadow DOM. Shadow boundary. The place where the shadow DOM ends and the regular DOM begins. Then we have the shadow root, the root node of the shadow tree. For example, you can refer this diagram. We know that document object model, the DOM, it's all about tree structure, right? Within the tree, let's say that we have an element and I want to attach my shadow DOM in that particular element. Then that element is going to act as a shadow post. And whatever I have attached, that entire structure is known as shadow tree. And when it's going to end and the regular DOM is getting started again, that is known as shadow boundary. And then we have the shadow root, the root node of the shadow tree. You can refer this diagram and also I will leave a link in the description. If you want to know more about it, kindly refer those links. And also we have to know that there are two modes in a shadow DOM. The first one is the open. That's going to be very easy to query the elements. But there is also another type called closed and it will be little difficult to query the elements, but still we can do that. I will show you in detail. With enough theoretical knowledge, I think it's a time to do some code and let us learn what is Shadow DOM and how it is implemented. So I'm going to head over to my VS code and within that I have created three files. One is the index.html and the index.js and the another one is the style.css. So let's, let's create a HTML template first and here I'm going to add my CSS first. So link colon CSS and here we have a file name called style.css. Similarly, I'm going to also add the index dot uh, JavaScript. So let's say that script src and here I'm going to give my index dot JS. Okay. And of course I want to load this once the page is loaded. So I will use the keyword called default. Okay. Now within the body, I'm going to create a paragraph element and here I'm just going to say like hello. Okay. Now let's open this in the live server so that we can see the changes in real time. Okay. So this is my uh, HTML file from here. Okay. Now I'm going to color this. Okay. So in my style.css, I'm going to say P paragraph tag and then I'm going to focus on the color and I'm going to make it as red. So now here you can see that the paragraph becomes red in color. Now, if I try to copy and paste the same element for multiple times, of course, all the elements are going to be in the same color. Okay. But I want to create a shadow DOM. And within that also, I'm going to have the paragraph, but it is not going, the paragraph tag within the shadow DOM, it's not going to inherit this property. Let us see how to do that. So first of all, I have to create a class. And let's say that it's going to be uh, my web component. Okay. And it's going to extend the HTML element. And within this, I'm going to have my constructor first and then make sure you're going to call the super or else it won't work. And then I'm going to say this dot attach shadow 
and then I'm going to specify the mode. So if you remember, I said like we have two modes. One is the closed and another one is the open. Open is going to be very simple. So let's start with that. Okay. Now, meanwhile, I'm going to inspect this page. And if I expand this paragraph, I mean body, and within that I can see that I have paragraph. Uh, but other than that, I don't have anything. And please uh, don't consider this script. This is basically coming from the VS code because we are using that extension to uh, do the live reload okay okay now i'm going to create a shadow host first so if you remember in the documentation i said like shadow dog host is nothing but the regular dom nodes that the short that the shadow dom is going to be attached right so i'm going to create the shadow host first so let's say that here i'm going to have a div with the id called my dom okay so this is going to act as my um shadow host okay Meanwhile, let's go to our inspect and here you can see that we got this guy called my dom, right? With the ID of a div, from a div. Now here, I'm going to say like my web component, okay? So web component and let's close this tag, okay? So this class, I mean this tag, of course, it's not part of this HTML document, right? So div is part of this document, p is part of this one, body is also. But this is custom element, right? So we didn't say what this element is all about. We are going to create that. So here in my index.html, I'm going to say window dot custom elements. Then I'm going to define it with the name, whatever I have specified over here. That is my web, my dash web dash component. And then I have to specify what class I'm going to inject. Okay. So here I'm going to inject the class that we created my web component. Okay, that's it. Very simple. And of course, here we have compiled a mirror because of this guy. Okay, that's it. Very neat and clean, right? Now, as soon as I do that, you can see that here we have open mode of, I mean, mode of open and this is the shadow, right? So here you can see that we have this shadow root and it is in open mode. If I want to make it as closed, I can just simply change this to closed. Okay, that's it. Now here you can see that we have a closed shadow. Okay. Now, within the shadow, I'm going to attach something. So let's make it as open again. And then to attach any of the HTML elements within the shadow, we have to use this function called connected callback. So here, connected callback. And within that, we have to specify the HTML elements. So I'm going to say this dot shadow. root dot and I'm going to focus on the inner HTML and then let's attach one more p tag. So I'm going to open the p tag here and then I'm going to close this guy as well. And here I'm going to say this is in shadow root. Okay. Now if I go here, you can see that we have like this is in shadow root. Okay. So this is how we have to create the shadow. Root. This is how it is implemented. Okay. Now, let's say that I want to do the query of this. Okay, I want to take the text. If you notice, this is also in the paragraph text and this is also in the paragraph, right? But here the color is red, but here it is not in red, right? The reason is whenever we have a shadow root, it is not going to inherit any of the property from the regular DOM. That is the advantage. Of course, it is not only about the uh, color or any styles. Other than, other than that also, we have a lot of features. Please kindly refer the link in the description. You will look, you will be able to learn so many things. Okay. Okay. Now, in terms of testing, uh, whenever we have something like this, of course, we have to know like how to take this element, right? Uh, I will do that in a separate video. But as of now, I will show you in the console how to check that. Okay. So first of all, of course, we have to take this web element, right? So this custom element. So for that, I'm going to say document dot query selector. And then I'm going to give the selector name here. And let's store that in a element. Okay. So var element. Okay. Then from that, I'm going to again do the query selector. Okay. And then I'm going to select my p tag here. Okay. Now here, um, okay, it's giving null because we didn't store. So what we wanted to, we want to grab the text, right? So here I can say like text content. That should work, I think. Um Okay, uh, let's see here. So from here, I have to take the shadow. Okay, so here uh, we cannot take that directly, correct? 
because this is the element and from the element we cannot query the p uh, any tag directly because here you can say it is basically within the shadow rule so for what we have to do is very simple we can say like element dot shadow root then i can do the query selector and then i can give it like whatever the tag name i want let's store that here so i'm going to say like const uh, my p and then i if i want to take the text probably i can say like dot text content that is going to give me the text present within the paragraph tag okay so this is how we have to uh, do the query or we have to take the element okay so very simple first what we have to do we have to find the unique web component the custom element and then from that we cannot directly query the selector what we have to do we have to go to the shadow root then we have to do the query selector okay that's it then whatever you want to do of course you can do very simple but the same logic will not applicable it's not applicable to the close down let me show you an example so here i'm going to change this focus on here focus on the elements as well as here okay so from open i'm going to make it as closed state first okay now here you can see that closed and if i go to the console you can see that already we are getting an error it says that cannot set property inner html of a null okay because what i did here is i said like this dot shadow root okay since it's a closed it have more encapsulation and we cannot directly access the shadow root property okay but of course we have a way so this attach shadow is going to return me the shadow root okay so i'm going to store that here let's say that i'm going to make it like this dot my root equal to okay so whenever we we are going to attach that's going to return me this one okay now here i'm going to say this dot my root dot inner html and then we have this text okay so here you can see that now we don't have any error in the console okay so this is how we have to do as well now let's try to find the element again okay before that let me show you once again we have a mode equal to closed and this attach shadow is going to return us this particular element called my root uh, this just anything it just like um, kind of like object or variable we are storing okay it can be anything okay and then based on that particular return type the particular object we are using the inner html function okay then uh, it's going to say like closed because of course the mode is closed now let us try to query this okay so first of all we are going to find the same element again so i can say like document dot query selector and the web element name that is uh, my web component and let us store that here so our element equal to okay then from the element if i try to find the shadow uh, root again then if i do like query selector uh, first of all let's see with this okay shadow root then if i hit enter you can see that basically it's returning us null we cannot get that shadow root proper property directly from the closed shadow dom okay so what we have to do is we have to say instead of shadow root we have stored that in a variable called or a object called my root right so here i have to say like my root then if i give enter you can see that we already got the shadow root closed shadow root okay now let's try to pick this p tag okay so here i'm going to say dot query selector and again i'm going to give the p and then i can use the text content now here you can see that we got the text that is present here okay so what is the learning here basically uh, what is the difference between open and the closed shadow dom shadow dom is basically both provides the encapsulation but whereas closed one defines more encapsulation so here while creating the page i know that okay this is my uh, element name or uh, this is my shadow root name based on the root i can manipulate the dom but if we don't know this for example let's say that this is going to be implemented by someone and we are trying to manipulate the dom then it is not possible until we know we don't until we know the name of this attached shadow dom element okay um, that is the advantage in closed and open of course we can use the property this dot shadow root and of course we can take the value okay so this is how shadow dom is implemented it is not about only the styling it, basically if we don't want to inherit anything and we want to keep our uh, dom in encapsulation 
then we can go with the Sharanam concept. Okay. Now, while learning this, I have a question. We can do the same thing in iframe as well, right? So, for example, let's go to our index.html. Before that, I'm going to create a file called frame.html. And within this, I'm going to have a bot uh, paragraph tag. And then let's say that hello iframe. Okay. Now, let's go and attach this one. So, here after the p tag, I'm going to add does this iframe and here I'm going to say frame.html. Okay, so here you can see that we got like hello iframe. Even though this uh, p tag is within the iframe, so of, of course it is not also doing the inherit. So why we need this particular shadow DOM? We can use the iframe as well, right? But actually there is a good explanation for that. So you can refer this uh, link. I will just leave a link in the description. You can refer this. To be simple, in summary, while both iframes and shadow DOM provides encapsulations, only the shadow DOM was designed for use with web components and thus avoid the excessive separations set up overhead and clunky markers and iframes. To be simple, uh, if, if I go and inspect this one, let's go and inspect this one. Uh, here you can see that within the iframe, again, we have a document, again, we have a HTML, we have a head, we have a body and everything, right? But if I go and check this my web component, it doesn't have so many things. It is have it have only the things that we are going to attach. Okay, so most of the time we can see iframe like if you are going to embed in uh, Google Maps or Google YouTube videos, then of course it need its own styles. It needs its own JavaScript files to work. In that case, iframe will make sense. But if you want to create a simple DOM where you don't need another HTML to be embedded, you can use the shadow. Okay. I'll just leave the link in the description for this one and all the references. You can go through it. It's a really good topic to understand. Okay. Now, I believe you got at least few idea about the shadow DOM, about the open and the closed. And of course, a lot of people say that we cannot take element from the closed one, but of course we can take that. Okay. So with this knowledge, probably we can find the elements and we can automate our test case using Selenium, Playwright, Protector, what, what, whatever we have. Okay. So that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed this video, how the implementation works. Okay. In the next video, definitely we'll see how to uh, automate as well. Okay. So that's it for my side. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video very soon. If you find this video helpful, please kindly share with your friends and colleagues. Tata bye, -bye. Take care. Oh, 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 oh,